here from Sound Better. How's everyone doing? Thanks a lot for uh, joining this live webinar chat with uh, superstar rock star mixing engineer Manny Mariquin. Uh, the top of his game, the top of the game these days. Half the songs you heard were mixed by him. Thank you all for joining at all these strange hours from all over the globe. We know you're sitting in your pajamas. It's okay. Uh, you don't know what, what bottom where we got going on. Uh, anyways, thanks a lot for coming. I want to uh, thank Manny for his time so much. His time so valuable. And we're really honored that he's such a good friend of Sound Better and he, he's ready to take your questions. And, um, and I'm going to pass it over to Manny Mariquin over at Larrabee Studios. Um, thanks to SAE Point Blank for, uh, for being a part of this. And thanks, Manny. Questions on the left, just feel free to hit us. We'll pass over all the popular ones, all the quality questions. So here we go, Mr. Manny Mariquin. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining me. This is awesome. I can't believe we're doing this. This is great. I, first, I want to thank Shahar. Um, man, thank you for making it happen. Of course, Point Blank and um, SAE. Um, so listen, uh, thanks. This is my room here at Larrabee in LA. I've been here for a long time. Uh, so this is my home away from home. Um, I've been doing this for um, for a quiet, uh, uh, just a few years there. But um, this is what I this is I breathe and live this, and I hope that all you guys do the same. And uh, I'm excited to be doing this. I'm excited to answer any questions you guys have whether they're technical questions or not, uh, we are going to rock. So, um, yeah, you know what? Enough about myself because <laughs> um, I really want to get to as many questions as possible. And I'm going to call my lovely, lovely Delbert. Uh, hey, buddy, I lost the, uh, the window where I can see the questions. Uh, so we're going to just, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, check it out. <clears throat> So I'm, I'm gonna definitely answer. I'm gonna get to all the questions. Is that it? Uh, Here, it you can get out of that window. Sorry, guys. Uh, I just lost the the window. Yeah, close that. What's that in the back? What's that? No, that's not it either. While Manny's, While Manny's uh, uh, working, uh, working uh, uh, getting that question yeah, window back, back. Um, we just want to say thanks again for joining. I see we got people here from every country. We see hello from Colombia, hello from Los Angeles, hello from Boston. This is really cool. And uh, you know, we can't pass over all those hellos, but, but you know, we love you, Manny. He's going to see all those at the end of this, of this thing. So we're going to pass them back to Manny right now. Guys, I'm still. Um, Shahar, I still don't. The, the window disappeared with the questions, so uh, let me um, see. Maybe if you could, can you see the questions on your on your end? I can see the questions. You know I'm just gonna read them to you. Okay. Yeah, maybe do that while we get uh, this figured out. Sounds good. Sounds good. First of all, you got you got um, you know Pensado place place. You got hello from everything here. I'm gonna bring the window back up. Um, okay, let's check out some of the questions here. Um, okay, we got some questions about the low end. Uh, let's see here. Any tips for getting that amazing low end, like on the latest Kanye West, West record? Well, listen, low end is really interesting. That's Usually the hardest, well, for me, is one of the hardest things to uh, to get because I always say that you got a lot of information down there. You got from, uh, you know, you have your your 808, your kick, your bass. You, you got so many things down there. So what I try to do is, uh, I've said before, uh, where uh, when we mixed uh, 808s and Heartbreak, this uh, Kanye West, it was all about, obviously, the 808s. And what we ended up doing on that which was really interesting, my approach to I actually don't, um, I don't EQ it or do that much to it only because I feel like I, I want to color around that frequency, which is, say it's the 808 bass or the kick. So if, if something's getting in the way, uh, maybe the bass is getting in the way and the 808 should be the priority, then you got to kind of EQ the bass out of the 808 
Um, there's uh, there's different tricks. Uh, sometimes you compress it a little bit, and then you know what compression does is it, it'll give you a nice punch, but uh, it will take away some of that sub information that you have. So you got to be really careful with that. And uh, uh, once you get the punch going, then you add some low end to it, some sub uh, information with with EQ or um, you know anything that will add sub to it. But I think that um, you should definitely, you guys should try not touching the 808 next time you do something and just color around the 808. Actually bring the 808, have that be the loudest thing in the mix and then slowly start bringing other instruments around that. And then if anything at any point you bring anything up and it gets in the way, then e either EQ, do a level thing or you know, whatever, whatever it is that you can, you know, Fill that information with a low end. Anything that gets in the way, just get rid of it. Uh, so, the, so the next time you do something with an 808 uh, or bass, whatever takes, you know, priority down there, uh, EQ around that, and, uh, and and so try that. So I got my questions back up. Woohoo! Uh, so listen, I'm gonna uh, let's see. Uh, do you, okay, so this is a great question uh, from Phil Manny and Shahar. Uh, do you look? Oh man, my window disappeared again. <laughs> anyway, Shahar, uh, it was a uh, what do I look for in uh, interns? Yeah, the window disappeared. So that's another good question. What I look for in interns? Maybe do the same thing. Um, first of all, they have to have a great, great personality. I feel like we're in the uh, the generation of entitlement, meaning that. A lot of people nowadays feel like it should be handed to them, and uh, and that's not the way it works. Um, I do care if you know something, if you know your chops, if you know your shortcuts on tools and all that. I'm cool with that, but if your attitude sucks, I don't want to be in the room with you, and I don't want you to be in the room with me. So personality, number one. That will get you through the door, and that will get you through the bad times. Now, somebody that... My intern has to be able to have a good personality. He has, you know, I got a lot of artists coming in and out, and I got to be able to trust them and how they react and how they act around artists, producers, A and R's. I got uh, managers. I got to be sure that they have the right personality. Um, so, if you guys got a bad personality, work on it. You definitely got to work on that. That's number one. All the technical stuff, all this and tools and the board. All that's gonna come with time, you know. You're you're gonna, I'm gonna teach you that, and you're gonna learn from all that. But you cannot, you cannot have a bad attitude, and you cannot come in the room thinking you know it all. Because you guys got to remember, this is art. Um, there's no such thing as right or wrong. Uh, it's just all subjective, and you have to be open-minded to everything. So my assistants, my interns, they all know that you gotta have the right attitude and the right, uh, you know personality to be in the room and then any, any everything else just falls falls right into place so um shahar as he's getting me the another computer to look at the, the questions do you mind uh, reading up another question sure we got sure, a lot of questions, questions here, here. Um, do you mix you with mix monitors, monitors full blast, blast or, low? or low so monitors i'll show you guys uh i got those the N good old ns10s uh, and I got some KRKs with my filter, fancy filter, as you can tell, uh, some tissue <laughs> to cover, uh, to soften up those top, uh, the, the high end. Um, okay, so monitors. If I'm mixing a song that I know is gonna be a club song, if, if you know, uh, for example, if it's something that I, I just mixed a song for DJ Khaled which I know is going to be in the club. So uh, I don't know if you guys heard the song Bugatti. I woke up in a Bugatti. That song uh, obviously is a club song. So I will go upstairs. And what I mean upstairs is I go on the big boys. Now once I do the big boys, I want to get all that low information out of the way. So I want to make sure that my sub, my kick, all that stuff is not fighting each other. So I will listen to it loud. Uh, because I, it's got to feel right, and you got, and it's hard to monitor soft and uh, feel right. 
at the towards the end of the mix, then I lower it. I go to my NS tens, and uh, if it's a club joint, I you know eighty percent of the time I will monitor off my NS tens. And uh, on my NS tens, I have a sub, and the sub is just just like if it's a it's probably at one and a half, just a tiny bit for more for ear fatigue because when I do listen to the NS tens loud, it, they you know they're harsh speakers. They're they're you know they're 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 hard. Uh, on the ear. So uh, with the sub, it makes me feel a, a little more than actually working the drivers. Uh, uh, so yeah, so I do listen to uh, stuff loud in the beginning. And then when I start doing some vocal rides and you know more intricate you know rides and levels and balancing and EQs, I like to monitor soft because I know that that's uh, it just gives you a better perspective when you do you know for, for the outs you know the world, the outside world. Uh, yeah, so monitors, but NS10s, those are my main monitors, and I do monitor soft the majority of the time. So Shahar, give me sh give me another uh, another question. All right, all right. Let's keep those speakers out. Um, how do you make do you mono make guitar sound, sound wide? wide? Okay, so um, get a doubler. Uh, uh, if you have one single guitar. Um, a trick would be to uh, copy it uh, onto another track and do a you know 12 millisecond to 40 millisecond delay, and you can p pan them hard left and hard right, and you have this one mono guitar just go super wide. Now the key here is you got to pan them in because they're going to be too wide and they may cancel each other. Uh, so in, if you go to mono, not that anybody listens in mono anymore, but they will dis they will cancel each other out. But they will be wide. So what I try to do is maybe I'll EQ the one on the right side completely different than the one on the left side and vice versa. I'll complement uh, both of them so that there's still, it's not an obvious drastic EQ on one side, but it's enough for you to like feel like there's some width to it. And now you take your pan and... Uh, bring the pans in a little bit so if you're a hundred and a hundred bring them into 60 and 60 and see what how much width you want and that's really the best way to do it now a doubler will double your guitar as well but it will give you um will give you a, a certain tone and color that you may not necessarily want sometimes it's a cool effect and if you're going for that effect great uh if not then it's best to uh to just you know copy it onto another track Delay it a little bit so it doesn't cancel out, and uh, and work with the width. So, I hope that answered that question. So, Shahar, shoot me uh, if you have another one. All right, we got a picture. Yeah, we got so many good questions. Um, was there ever something you mixed that you, when you were done, you sat back and just said, "Wow, I was a part of this. That's amazing." You know, I'm so, so, so lucky to be working with some of these artists, man. I mean, I'm, I'm truly, like, just honored and blessed and humbled and everything. Anytime anybody comes to me and asks me to do a mix, it's, it's honestly, it's an honor because I know I treat it like it's their baby, and I, um, I want to obviously take ca good care of their baby. So uh, having said that, I'm really lucky to work with some incredible artists. So th there's been a lot of, a lot of times where I her stuff back thing and thought oh man this is this is like this is heaven <laughs> you know because you take something and you make it you know when I start with all my faders down and I start bringing faders up and all of a sudden the painting starts to make sense and you work on it and work on it and then subconsciously all of a sudden something just clicks and you and it feels right and it just feels perfect and you can't describe that feeling when when everything just kind of falls into place and uh, and it's and you're wrestling it the whole time because you are wrestling every song I've mixed I wrestle with it some of them are easier to wrestle than others some of them are sumo wrestlers that kick my ass but for the most part you know you're wrestling the song to see what the essence of it is it the feel of the song how what are people gonna how are they gonna feel when they listen to it all those things you think about and you really make sure that you're, you know, 
you get the essence of that song. Our job is not to create the best reverb on the vocal. My job is not to give you the best kick drum, the best snare sound. No, my job is what is the song telling you? What does that song do to your emotions? Because those are, those tend to last the longest. You know, I uh, stuff that sounds good sounds good. It's like short-lasting bubble gum. You put it in your mouth, and 30 seconds later, you want to spit it out as opposed to longer lasting bubble gum where you can just leave it in your mouth and you can chew it for hours and still taste good so I try to my approach is that I wanna try to make that song come to life if it's not there already I, whatever I can do to help it come to life and hopefully live for a long time you know uh, so yeah there's been many many times that uh, that I just uh, want to pinch myself and say, wow, this is so cool that I'm even in the same room with this guy and, and we're actually communicating on some other level musically. And that's, that's, that's a great feeling. You know? So uh, I think we're getting, what do you think? Uh, Shahar, why don't you give me one more question because I know uh, Dale here is uh, almost done with it. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. We got so many good questions. What's your favorite limiter at this point for hip hop songs where you have to achieve loudness? My favorite limiter, uh, gee, that's like pick a, that's like having twenty kids and say which one's your favorite kid. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I, I like different things for different, you know, like I, I love the Avalon twenty forty four on kicks uh, and also vocals actually. I love the two two Texia one B is like such a good uh, vocal compressor as you can see right there. Um, I love, uh, you know, the good old Fairchild, the 670 on. I do a lot of parallel compressing on it with drums and sometimes guitar, keyboards. I mean, it just works on anything. Uh, I just tried it on a vocal. Uh, uh, I'm working on this uh, uh, on the weekend uh, from Toronto, and um, I used it on uh, his voice on one song, and it just sounded so good. I'm doing this other thing with Babyface, and it sounded so good on Babyface's vocal. Uh, um, I don't know if I have a favorite limit. That's uh, outboard now. Um, uh, uh, plugins, man. I, I, you know, I still like that art compressor. You know, we. Uh, I, I that's still my go. It works on everything. I, I like uh, the, that CLA. Um, you know, 1176. That's the homie. So, um, I love his. Um, I love that. Uh, there's uh, the Kramer too. The the Kramer sounds good. I mean, there's so much stuff right now. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of plugins that don't sound as good, but if you can, you know, my suggestion is just play with them and whatever sounds good, store that and come back to it and you, you pretty soon get to know the uh, the personality of that plugin or hardware unit and uh, and uh, store it in that, you know, up here and next thing you know, next time you feel like you need that color, you'll be like, oh, I need this compressor to help me with this color and boom, and that's how you'll 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 really get to know your your plugins and your hardware. I got a uh, okay. So uh, let's make some money. Okay, so I got some uh, questions here. I wanna thanks Shahar for uh, helping out while we were figuring it out. Uh, what was it like? To make okay, what was it like to mix for the weekend? I gotta say this album, uh, the weekend that's about to come out in September. Um, I forget how many songs I worked on, but I worked on a lot of them. Man, I got to tell you, this guy Abel from The Weeknd is, is incredible. If you guys are not familiar with The Weeknd, please. Uh, it was for me, it was great because he's such a he's such an artist, and I love the I just love working with creative people and artists. Uh, and he uh, he was such a pleasure to work with. Um, and you know, we just had big said something about big drums and big uh, reverbs and. Yeah, it seems like nowadays everybody wants big drums and reverb. So, um, you know, there's a great, great uh, reverb out there called the uh, Manny Mariquin reverb. Uh, that's <laughs> really awesome. <laughs> so you guys should try that out. It's uh, we worked really hard on it, and it sounds. I I use it on a lot of my mixes. I would say maybe 80 to 90 percent of my mixes. Um, so big reverbs. There's a beautiful plate on there that you guys should check out. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go for more questions. You guys got some good questions here. Um, 
Okay, so do you prefer from, this is from Maik Ol, I don't know if I just kill your name, uh, but does he prefer to use reverb or delay to create a room in the mix? Uh, that depends. Uh, I like sh short rooms on, on vocals. Uh, it just uh, adds a, a third dimension. Um, try like a tight, tight room on the vocal that, that, okay, say you have a vocal and you want it to be really intimate, but you don't want it to be dry. And you're like, well, how is that going to work out? So next time you just try a really short room um, with a tiny bit of pre-delay and you EQ the return uh, so that it doesn't get in the way of the vocal. In other words, if your vocal has a lot of 3K, EQ 3K out of the room and bring it up until it kind of, the vocal goes from being in the middle to doing this. Without adding reverb to it, you're not going to hear it. You're just going to feel that vocal just get really wide. Um, so I create, you know, if I want to create rooms, you know, I do a lot of tight reverbs. Delays help, uh, work sometimes, but if you do a really short delay with no feedbacks, it kind of gives you a sense of depth. Um, when you start adding feedbacks in it, it just sounds like a delay, so it doesn't sound like a room. So try, you should definitely try, uh, tight rooms. How am I doing, Shahar? Doing awesome. Doing awesome. <laughs> Good. You can just scroll, you can just through, scroll those through those questions, questions pick out the pick ones out I know it's hard. hard. Yes. Yeah, so uh, let's see, let's see. What was it like? Let's see. What's that? Sure, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Comment from Artless Production. Do I, Do you and Spike stent hang out <laughs> um no i like spike uh but no i would like to actually hang out with them but no we don't hang out um <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah props uh to spike okay so gus vela uh do you always start with drum uh, mixing uh, do you always start mixes uh, with drums yes 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 every mix i i've ever done i start with drums and I always say um, that even if the song doesn't have any drums, I still start with drums. Um, so the way I have it set up, here, let me sh show you guys my board. Um, let's see. I don't know if you can tell, but all those faders there are drums. Um, so I start with my drums every mix. And maybe because I used to play drums, I wasn't, I wasn't a very good drummer, but... Thankfully, I wasn't that good because then I'm in the studio. Uh, but I, I don't know, man. I always start with drums and I get them sounding, feeling right, whether it's a ballad or whether it's a pop song, whether it's an alternative, folky, whatever it is, I start with that. And I may jump into um, some keys and some vocals, but then I'll go, I, I'll keep referring back to the drums. Um, I want that the backbeat, the foundation of the song. I want that to be right. And then that inspires me to, to start coloring around that. Uh, sometimes even if the drums are not the priority, uh, the uh, focal point on the, on the song, they still got to be a certain way. I'm just, you know, my drums just has, they have to be tight and, uh, and uh, they just got to cut through. So I do. Uh, so Delbert, do we have another question? <laughs> yes, Adrian asks, do you have any tips for us guys who don't have a perfect mix environment? How do we get better mixes? Okay, so if you don't have a great mix environment, you know, like I said, we're so I'm so blessed to have this incredible room. And like I said, I've been here for a long time, so I really, really know my room. But this is the, the thing with uh, environments. Um, it's like monitors. You just really got to get to know your room. You got to get to know your monitors. You could have ten thousand dollar monitors in this room, or you can have the you know the NS tens, which I think are like I don't know less than five hundred bucks, maybe even less when they came out. So it doesn't matter what monitor you have. You just got to know it. How do you get to know your monitor, or in this case, your room? Well, you got to listen to a lot of music in that room. You got to to you know go in the car, headphones. Oh, the sub on. Um, 
radioactive is like this uh in the car sounds like that and the club sounds like this and this record store sounds like that and then you take it to your room even though it's not treated at least you know what you're getting out of it you know of course you try to treat it i mean if you don't have a budget there's uh, those egg cartons that you can put on the wall you know for nothing or you can do anything like that that doesn't cost a lot of money but it just helps but knowing your room knowing how your low end re uh, you know your width your low end and the harshness of the room is super important and you just gotta listen to the records you gotta listen to if you got a favorite mixer if, if Michael Brower is your favorite mixer then listen to all his shit and analyze it in your room and just make sure that you're kinda copying what he does in a way and all, pretty soon you'll know your room people may go in there and go oh man this room sounds weird but it doesn't matter it's all up to it, it, all that matters is what you know about the room and that's it so just play 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 all kinds of different genres of music as well so that you get to know your room so Delbert next question <laughs> several people have asked what's going on on the master bus on the must oh master bus yeah of course <laughs> so I I'm not a fan of over processing the the stereo bus um, if I have uh, my SSL on I use my SSL a lot here let me show you guys uh, where is it up oh. There it is. It's this thing right here. <laughs> this. That is my favorite compressor in the world. Um, so, I don't do a lot of processing um, on the stereo bus. I, I'm not a big fan of uh, multi-band compression on the stereo bus. I feel like that always gets me in trouble at some point. And uh, what I feel with multi-band compressors, I feel like I, I lose a lot of the uh, the heart and soul of that song. I, I mean, yeah, it sounds better, I think, like cleaner, not better. It sounds more even. Uh, it sounds nicer. And sometimes you don't want to sound nice. You, know, you don't want to sound safe. Uh, so you just, uh, so I go not for the safe route. Some, some pop songs you got to, limit the crap out of the you know the stereo bus and uh i will use a combination of my ssl on the board i'll do a tiny bit of an l2 but the funny thing about using the l2 is just just for punch and, and when i'm saying a tiny bit i mean if I, if I if i go one or one and a half that's like pushing it um other people abuse that thing and that's a sound and that's great but uh, I don't do that much. And, you know, sometimes I put a widener on the mix. But you got to be careful with that. What happens when you do that, you take the middle away. So once your center disappears, then your, the chest disappears. So you got to, you know, it's like how much salt, how much pepper you put on. And uh, so you got to be careful with stuff like that. I feel like the number one um, rookie mistakes are over-processing the stereo bus. So just be careful with that. But... Uh, but yeah, I'm not doing anything special on my stereo bus. I try to do it in, on, you know, on every instrument. So if I want more width, I find what gives me width within the song, and I ex try to exploit that. So, tell but. <laughs> uh, there's several questions about how to go about mixing vocals that, to make them bright. And Hang on. Soft. Can you guys hear him when he's asking, Shahar? Can you hear him? Yeah, we can yeah, hear him. Okay, great, great. So, so there's several several questions asking about how to get bright sounding pop vocals without them being too harsh. Mm. Yeah, there's another plugin by Manny Mariquin called a deharsher. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not selling plugins, guys. I promise. No, no, no. those are mine. Those are for my use. Uh, it's tricky. It's uh, harshness is really, really. I feel like the low end is the toughest thing in a mix. And the second toughest is uh, vocals and um, how harsh. Because what happens is when you have a harsh vocal, it kills your ears. You can't turn it, turn it up. But when you, have a, uh, when you take the harshness out, then you kill the artist. You kind of just take away their life. You, know? it's, uh, you suck it out of them. So you got to be really careful. Um, there's a couple of tricks. I mean, you know... Uh, you know some um, 
the harsher type of thing where you uh, take the mids and you compress some of the mids you know you do some uh, parallel compression on that too uh, where you remove some of the mids without you know taking the the middle out uh, the mid frequencies out um, you gotta know your compressors uh, some compressors warm up certain vocals um, and you gotta find the, the magic combination of okay on this vocal if I put in the 1176 I know that the 1176 has this frequency and I know that if I add that then I take it away on my EQ then it's more musical so you're now you're taking away on the EQ but you're adding that frequency from the compressor uh, still sounds a little bit harsh now let me DS some of the words on top and then let me after the DS or let me add a different band so that it's still bright so um, you gotta play around with that mid with whether it's DSers, D harshers parallel compression, side chains, um, multiband, some some great multiband compressors nowadays work really well. Um, you just gotta focus on what the problem frequency is and uh, and compress that. So I you know it's tough. That's the I, I wish I had one uh, if I had a plug-in for that. <laughs> So yeah, so play around with that and uh, and see if that if that helps. Delbert, <laughs> Marcus asks, do artists ever want to get involved in the mixing stage of the record, and how do you go about this? Do artists want to get involved? There's um uh, man, you know, there's a I I feel like the majority of artists definitely want to get involved. Uh, they may not show up all the time, but they definitely want to be involved because this is their baby. This is the last stage before the world really hears it. I mean, yeah, there's mastering, but mastering is not such a uh, a creative process as as mixing is. There's still some creative stuff that goes in here, and you can really make a you can make a good song great. You can make a great song a classic with a, an incredible mix, uh, and you can also kill the mix. But if you kill the mix, and they'll go to something else to remix it. So. What you have to do is, um, when you have artists uh, be really involved with the mix, at the end of the day, I always say they, their name is in the front, and your name sometimes is in somewhere inside within this that big. So it's not your record. It's for you to help them out. So when artists get really involved, you just got to pick their brain and see what they're trying to uh, get out of there. Um, and that's that's your job. That My job is to hopefully get some their vision come to life and hopefully when it comes out of those speakers that's uh, we've achieved that and uh, so yeah I, I would say artists are very involved so still but uh, along the same lines uh, Jared asked do you prefer them to be in the room ah do I prefer artists to be in the room <laughs> well that depends on who uh, I, I, the way I usually work is uh, there's all these artists and producers are very respectful and they send me their files and they go look take it to where you think you can take it and when you can't take it any further call us and we'll come in or send us what you have or uh, so they're very respectful they leave me alone they want to let me do whatever whatever that my thing is and uh, and then they'll come in and they'll uh, they'll give their input sometimes it's almost nothing and other times we work on the mix for a while so every every artist and every song is different but yeah I, I prefer to work alone in the beginning because that's why they hire me to bring a fresh perspective to their song so so um, some music ass hi Manny from Spain Spain <laughs> Woo! English. Do you ne think next week or this week do you think there's a future in this business? Do I think there's a future in this business? It's interesting how he said business. Do, do I think there's a future in music? 100%, 180%. Do I think there's future in the business of music? Yes. Yes, there is. Uh, it's just, uh, I feel like we're in a transition stage now where we're trying to figure out, uh, labels are trying to figure out how to monetize the streaming because that is the future. Um, so uh, until they figure out how to monetize um, 
I think there's still got music. Listen, music is not going anywhere. Um, so it's just the business of music. It's just different. Um, it's just up to us to evolve. Uh, this is just an involvement. You know, we have to adapt to the change. We have to evolve. Music business is not going anywhere. Music is not going anywhere. If you, you know, if you, for some of us that get down a little bit, oh man, this is a different business today. Well, embrace it because if you were in the 40s, you'd be pissed off that the 50s came along because, you know, stereo kicked in and you're like, whoa, we like mono records. And uh, when you like take the sound of tape, well, it's still great. But if you didn't adapt, then you're probably not gonna be in in the business so the key here is that I do believe that the music business will get better it's just evolving and we have to adapt so the good old days may not be so good you know so now you gotta get you gotta live you know you gotta figure out what the the future good old days are gonna be so uh, and uh, for, for those of you that always ask questions like this uh, just Look at music history, the business of music history, and you'll notice that this is uh, this is nothing new. That this has happened before, and uh, we're here, we're surviving, and uh, uh, it's not going to go anywhere. Dilbert, Sound Skills asks, "Hi, Manny. Thank you for this great Q and A. What inspires you?" Great question. Um, you know what, man? Uh, just other music inspires the the shit out of me. Uh, Today I'll tell I'll give you my morning. Uh, I woke up and I put on Savages on, and it's a old girl kind of like punk band from the UK, I believe. They're from the UK, um, and they're uh, they're not old punk, but they're alternative punk. And I play that for about an hour and a half, and it's <laughs> it's really awesome. Uh, and then I got in the car and I listened to uh, Mozart, Requiem for a uh, break, uh, the Mass Requiem. And uh, I listened to that for about 10 minutes. And then after that, I, uh, I was listening to Billie Jean. <laughs> so that's my, uh, my morning. So that inspires me. Yesterday was uh, El Gran Combo, which is salsa music. Uh, the day before was uh, James Blake. So I suggest you listen, 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 listen to all kinds of different genres, styles, and uh, different volumes, uh, listen to background, foreground, whatever it is, just always listen and always be aware of why you enjoy that and why, what catches your attention. What, from, uh, from Mozart, what captured my attention? Oh, the way that those strings sound very, like, big but yet not harsh. And, and I'm already thinking how to EQ modern day strings with, like, a Mozart sound. Not that I'll ever do it, but my mind is always engaged. Like I'm always working. Uh, this this is a 24/7 job. There's no, this is not an office job where you come in and you leave and your life changes. I mean, I'm constantly thinking of in in my sleep, whether it's in the background, whether I'm anywhere. I'm always looking for inspiration, and it first comes from other genres and other artists, and second comes from just every day from piece, you know, art. Like art inspires me a lot. Something as simple as sculptures I mean you know so I suggest you find anything that you you're passionate about and that's it I, I had a, a producer here that his passion was cars and and that that's an inspiration you know, another guy said uh, architecture um, so for me is uh, just listening to other artists and genres and stuff um, and for you could be something else could be but just find that and uh, and just exploit that and and, and keep working on that because that's the one thing we do need. We do need inspiration constantly. Uh, it makes us uh, better, at least for me, it makes me a better mixer. Another oh, Manny asks. Another Manny. Yeah. Shit. How different is the process from uh, artist to artist? For example, Kanye West and John Mayer make very different music. So how do you approach the projects differently? Mm. Yeah, how do, you, how do I approach different genres? Um, Again, it goes back to, um, you know, I grew up playing drums in a semi-rock band, and then I grew up with a bunch of hip-hop kids, and um, and then when I went to a music school, we listened to jazz and classical in, in high school. Um, so I believe I'm part of that iPod generation where, you know, it's not, you, you know, I listen to old genres, and I think everybody does nowadays. I feel like the future mixers are going to be like, 
I feel like we're all going to be able to mix other genres because we grew up listening to everything. Um, so I, that's, I'm able to jump, uh, on there, uh, you know, it's so funny you say, uh, John Mayer and, uh, Kanye, cause we did go from, uh, I think it was, uh, <laughs> black skin or what is it? Skin, black skin, yeah. skin it. And, uh, and then the next day we went to John and the new John album is pretty cool, but pretty mellow. De definitely very <laughs> different from Kanye. So, um, it just takes a little getting used to, you know, I've been doing this for a, I feel like a long time now that I'm able to adapt. And again, that word comes back. You got to be able to adapt. Uh, and some things I got to, I don't, you know, some of the things I would do on an alternative record, I wouldn't do on a hip hop record. And just knowing that that's subconsciously what you're doing. Um, but for me, that keeps it exciting because I don't do the same thing every day. And, uh, even even if it's just levels, it's a different approach. But how do I do that? It's just again listening to a punk, a girl punk band this morning, and listening to Mozart. It's just you know listening to what's the focal point in Savages. Oh, they got their bass. Wh whatever they're running their bass through. Oh, I want to duplicate that sound next time I have a song that kind of sounds like that. So you just kind of do uh, what what I call this photo photographic memory with sounds and tones and and just store them in your head. So next time you have a have a punky song like I think uh, like Linkin Park had this really cool punky song called "Victimized" on their last album. Uh, if you guys get a chance, listen to that. It's so aggressive and it's so mean. But you know, I remember like I don't know why like Nine Inch Nails came to mind mixing that. I didn't listen to I, I didn't reference Nine Inch Nails, but it was in my head. So my what well, my perception of that helped me. Uh, without having to listen to it because I feel like sometimes if I would have listened to it it would have influenced me differently and sometimes I and that sometimes that's not a, a, a good thing so knowing your genres and knowing what's focal point and what it, what's important in each genre helps me every day so to roll a couple questions together mm -hmm. how long does it take to mix a song and then when do you know when it's finished okay so I get this asked a lot uh, you know, back in the good old days when I used to walk 20 miles uh, to go to school. No, in the good old days, they would give us a day to mix a song. They're like, here's a day, 12 hours, and if you go over, it's overtime. And blah, blah, blah. So we all, I think all mixers kind of got used to this one day a mix. Uh, sometimes they would have big budgets, and they would be like, oh, I want to mix it in two days. And that was such a luxury. Uh, nowadays, it doesn't work that way. Again, we're adapting to this new business model. Uh, nowadays, if I get a song and I mix it in two hours, it's done in two hours. Some songs take me a couple days. Uh, so I don't like to limit myself and say, I'm going to mix this in one day. No, you know what? But the reason why I can do that is the two-part question, which is, how do you know it's done? I don't know the answer to that, except you kind of close your eyes and you feel it and you listen and the process goes through your head and I got to make sure that the courses are like this. I, I got to make sure maybe 20 things go through your mind as you're listening and you're doing, you're checking off all those things that are important to you. And each song changes. Every song is different. So just by doing it so much, man, it's like, what's that, the 10,000 hour... What, what is that? That when You do something for 10,000 hours, you become an expert. I'm not an expert mixer, but I've been doing it a long time to know and feel when I'm done. I, uh, for me, it's about the feel and, of course, the sonics, but it's got to feel right, not necessarily sound right, if that makes any sense. So if I close my eyes and I listen to it, whether they're closed or not, if you really listen from the creative side, your right side of the brain, It'll kind of tell you when it's done. And I, I listen, and again, I don't believe it, any mix is ever done, but at some point you gotta walk away from it as well. So if you're mixing for a long period of time, to roll into another question, how loud do you listen and how do you take care of your ears? Yes, how loud do I listen? Um, that was asked earlier. Um, in the beginning, I kind of listened to loud and then I monitor soft. Um, 
how do you protect your ears? You know, the, I, I feel like I can listen to things in my room and not affect my ears as much. But if I went to a, a club or a bar or or even a restaurant that doesn't have good, you know, acoustics, I feel like my ears get damaged more, you know, going to see a show and all that. So just make sure you, I, I hope, you know, for the most part, I, I wear earplugs when I go out because they're not, you know they're not control environments and that just will kill you those you know those frequencies bouncing around will not be cool but uh in here i tend to listen to stuff loud um short 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 amount of time like maybe one pass or two passes on the song uh and then i monitor soft what you got <laughs> <laughs> so uh several people wanted a, a gear a tour of the gear but before that what percentage do you think is analog and, and in the box in your mixing? Yeah, so I would say, I don't know, I would say maybe 50-50, uh, only because I'm on the board. You know, I'm, if I had, if I had, if I didn't have the SSL, I think it would be a lot, the numbers would be like maybe 80-20. But the fact that I have the board, I have a compressor, parallel compressor, EQ, dynamics, gate, routing effects uh all here so if you count every eq that i use on the board compressor parallel and all that compared to what i actually add i would say i'm even more analog i may not use a lot of the gear all the time but i would say maybe you know i would say it's fair to say 50 50. i mean look at this beauty why wouldn't you want to use this that's, that's my girlfriend I mean, yeah, so. <laughs> okay, a mini tour of the gear. Uh, so are my Neves. They're 1066s, but uh, modded to be 1073s. Uh, there's a tape echo, pendulum. And, uh, and that's all you get. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, wait, more, more. Oh, I got to show you guys my new toy. Thanks to uh, the wonderful mastering engineer, Dave Kutch, which is the culture vulture. And, uh, and should we show them, like, yes, that is a Fairchild 670. <laughs> let's see, let's show them some more stuff. Motown's 1176s, the stressors, even tides. PCM 42s, TC, uh, AMS delays and reverbs. EQP 1As, some of the best in the world. Um, 2055, lunchbox. Let's see, what else? <laughs> <laughs> More Avalons, um, Massive Passive, More APIs, Quad 8s, 1073s, 2254, VAC rack EQs and compressors, oh, that one's uh, it's in the shop, going to the shop, <laughs> 3226.4s, more distressors and transient designer SPO 902 DSers TLAs gate state levels 160Xs what else oh the blunder tongues Day King the Moog uh, let's see what else we got Mercury EQ of course, you gotta have those. Every room must possess some of those. Uh, Manly Summit DCL 200 and another 33609 and a CL1B. So yeah, that's uh, that's some of my my toys. What do you think, Shahar? Gear porn, he says. What's that? Gear porn. <laughs> Gear porn. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> It's great. It's great so far. How about we take maybe one more question? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Let's uh, let's take a couple more and a couple more. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it.
Let me know any time. Advice for rookies. Advice for rookies. Oh man, uh, <laughs> I must sound like a broken record. Um, you gotta listen to, you know, different genres of music. It's that simple. Uh, that's the best advice. Um, second is just if you want to become a mixer, just find things that you can mix. Find friends and do it on spec and uh, just mix as as much as you can. Even if you fuck it up, just you learn. From, I I have learned more from my mistakes than I have from like mixes that people actually enjoy. So uh, it's okay to uh, it's okay to fuck up a few mixes and uh, learn from, but definitely learn from them. Um, and then and then you know listen to like I mean a place like you know Pensado is great you know because there's the community the audio community right now I feel like is is at its best I mean you know. A couple years ago, even I wouldn't be doing this. Uh, so, and I think that the one thing you'll find from the audio community is like they they're they're about sharing too. I mean, I, a lot of people are into secrets. Oh no, I'm not gonna tell them my secrets. But for me, there's there's really no secrets. I mean, I can't you know, it's like handing someone a piece of paper and and a pencil and say write write a, a book or whatever. You know, there's there's no secrets. There's 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 tools. We all have these tools and. You just got to get to know your tools, whether you're doing it in tools or uh, logic, just know your tools and, and that's it, man. So my advice to the rookies is you just got to mix, 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 mix. If you want to engineer, go record, record, record. If you're a producer, make beats. And if you're a songwriter, write a, a song a day for the rest of your life. And and so that's my advice. I'm going to do one last question. Maybe we should see if Shahar has a last question. Shahar, you want to... Do you want to do the last question here? <laughs> oh, everybody's gonna hate me if I do that. <laughs> All right, I got. Actually, I like the last question here. Do you have a specific person to whom you usually show your mixes first? No, I don't. <laughs> do you, yeah, right. The person I show the mix to is the artist, is my client, whoever. Uh, you know, whoever wants to listen to it, uh, or has the, uh, you know, if it's an artist that needs to approve the mix, they, 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 they'll listen to it first, you know. Um, I got to the point where I can see where the question comes from, like if you're, you know, do, do I play this mix to my buddies and see what they say? Uh, look, if you have someone you respect, why not? Why not? I mean, of course. But at the end of the day, you got to remember that everybody just like, you know, we all have them. Uh, we all have an opinion. So everybody will have an opinion. <laughs> so just gotta go with your gut, man. Just like if you like it, if you're passionate about it, it doesn't matter what other people think. If you're doing it, uh, you know, like the question before, if I'm a rookie and I'm doing this, if you love, 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 love it, then it doesn't really matter what other people think. So I've learned more about myself that if I love a mix that I'm doing, I tend to do well. The moment I'm not sure because of whether it's direction or this or that, if I start questioning, then that's the moment I you can hear it. I mean, you can't, you know, the great thing is that those speakers will not lie. It's just that simple. They're just not gonna make something up for you. So, uh, so just make sure that if you love it and if you got someone that you trust, sure, play it for them, but learn how to not rely on other people learn how to be yourself and learn how to be you know be a good mixer to yourself because because you can sell an Eskimo fan and that's you know and only you can do that don't you know you're not gonna hire someone to do that for you so you'll be the best seller and you'll be the best seller by really really enjoying it because it comes from the heart so so listen, thank you again, guys, for hanging out. Uh, Shahar, maybe we can do this again, and maybe next time we can do maybe an application here. Maybe I can have a mix-up and I can play. Uh, we'll, we'll think of things, and, uh, you know, of course, uh, I'm, I know I'm a social media whore, so you guys can follow me everywhere, and uh, per periodically I'll, you know, do a few tips here and there, and, uh, and hopefully we can do this again. Let's do it again, Manny. Thanks to everyone that hung out, and uh, I hope I, I was able to answer some of those questions. That's amazing. This is one of the best webinars I've seen, and I'm, and I'm trying to be objective here.
<laughs> really, really great. Amazing. Thanks so much. So we're going to do this again. So everybody, follow Manny and uh, follow Sound Better. And uh, yeah, we're going to hook up another one of these. So, so stay yes, tuned. Th again, thank you, Sound Better. You guys should definitely, if you're not hip to it, please do. It's so incredible what Sound Better is doing. So um, you guys should check it out. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you guys. Thanks everyone Thanks for logging on and for all the amazing all questions. questions. Sorry we couldn't Sorry get to all of them. And uh, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're uh, we're we're gonna put this up on the Sound Better Facebook, and we're gonna Manny's probably gonna share it in the Sound Better website. And that was amazing. All the you know great insight by Manny. So thanks so much for his time, and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks a lot, everyone. See you next time.